2016 was a year in which racial tensions in the United States came roaring to the surface, dominating headlines as young black men and women were killed by police, many in highly questionable circumstances. It put the issue of racism front and centre, and here in Canada, many ethnic groups say it's not just a problem south of the border. To help us understand how people of faith can promote racial healing, Tasha Morrison of Breathe the Bridge joins me from Austin, Texas. Tasha, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, great. Great to be here. So tell me about your organization, Be The Bridge, and what it does. Be The Bridge is an organization, and we're just basically um, geared towards the local church and, and organizations. What we want to do is help people um, see and understand um, what racial reconciliation really means, and then also how do we equip people um, how do we inspire people and how do we partner with people to promote racial reconciliations? And so simply, we just really say we want to be a credible witness for the glory of God. And when we say credible witness, that goes back to John 17. They will know you by the love that you have for one another. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a starting point, you know, and then there's a lot more details that we go into that. So that's basically what um, Racial Bridge, um, Be the Bridge is. It's just a, a group of people, um, organizations that meet, um, groups, excuse me, that meet all over the country. Um, actually, there's some in Canada that bring, come together um, to promote racial healing through conversation and, and relationship building. Yeah, and when you say known for the love we have for one another, that has to cross racial lines. And you know, here in Canada, we've been grieving along with you in the U.S. when we've seen the violence against young black and uh, black men and women. And I know a lot of my friends here, you know, even though this is happening in the U.S., they worry about their sons, their brothers, their fathers in a climate charged with mistrust. They say that they've seen them stopped more by police and many different things like that. How do we as followers of Jesus respond to these kinds of events? I think the greatest thing as followers of Jesus is we have to listen. And you can't deny someone else's experience. All our experiences are different and how we interact in our community and in our world is different. And that is different for people of color. It's not the same. And so a lot of times we're coming with our perspective and our experience and we filter that through our worldview lens. And we really have to understand um, and listen to voices of color um, and our experiences. And all of our voices are different. We're not a monolithic group. Um, we are different, so our interactions in our communities are different. And so I think the greatest thing that, um, that you know, the body of Christ can do right now is to lean in and listen to the stories, listen to um, the, the voices of those that are marginalized, and, uh, and really um, begin to um, try to understand through a different lens and a different perspective and a different experience. And the only way you can do that is by having friends and reaching across that racial barrier um, and that line and developing friendships with people um, that don't look like you. Yeah, really diversifying your groups. And I think, too, it takes a spirit yeah. of um, openness and humility in a sense, because sometimes when you're listening, you're having anger directed towards you that's really not about you. Even though I'm maybe a white person and you've been a victim of racism from a white person, you're not really angry at me, although it might feel that way personally. I, I really have to just uh, take a breath and just and, and let you really express yourself, right, without taking offense, I guess, which can happen either way. Right. And I think sometimes when people feel that you're listening, um, because we all want to, if we come into the conversation on the defensive, it's not going to work. And so I think we all have to be able to listen. But I think the greatest thing that we can have in this is empathy. And so being able to share someone else's pain, walk in their pain and listen, even when you don't understand, even when you don't agree. So I can have empathy with someone that I don't necessarily agree with. Mm. And so I think that's really important for us in this conversation because you know, when we uh, when we disagree, a lot of times that creates another barrier because we don't that disagreement makes us not want to listen. But how do we press through what we're feeling and see that person as the Imago day, my brother and sister in Christ who is in pain and being able to identify with that and being able to listen. And how do we how do we keep our hearts pure? You know, a lot of times I think racism is, is inherited from your community, maybe from your family or from bad experiences that you've had. How do we make sure that we keep our hearts pure? Because as followers of Jesus, I don't believe that any kind of prejudice is something that we should allow in our hearts. But of course, we're human and we do it. So how do we do that? I think one of the greatest things that we can do is really, um, like I said, um, 
is, is have friendships. Mm-hmm. Be very intentional and strategic about bu- building friendships around with people who don't look like you, who are of different ethnicity. Because it's different when you have, uh, when someone's talking about um, a black male and they're aggressive and they're violent, but you know two or three people that don't even fit that description. The same thing with me. Um, you know, I, maybe there's t- stories of not trusting white people, like do not trust white people. But if I have several friends where they are trustworthy and um, they have been supportive of me and they have listened, that contradicts that lie that I've been told. And so we have to understand that where your friendships begin, your assumptions and your stereotypes, they diminish. And so it's important as believers is that we are not we are not um, governed by the world systems in that. We have to be counterculture in that. So regardless of how this world works and how our community works, as believers, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we therefore must show empathy. We therefore must cross over um, racial barriers because we have to realize that the first church in Acts, um, that church was that of a multi-ethnic, multicultural church. Mm. And so, and we've allowed that, those differences to divide us. And that's, you know, when you know how the enemy works as as it relates to divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And so we have to press through all of that and have these hard and difficult conversations. Like I tell people, the work of racial reconciliation is difficult. It is beautiful. I mean, it is, it is hard. Um, It's awkward, but we have to embrace that awkwardness and do it anyway. But it matters. These conversations matter. It matters. Tasha, thank you so much for joining me. If people want to start a Be uh, Be the Bridge bridge group or or just find out more about your ministry, it's www.beabridgebuilder.com, correct? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. We want to keep this work this conversation going. Yeah, and they can download a guide. There's a free guide that helps people understand um, this conversation and how to have a conversation of getting to know you and look and reaching across racial lines on our website. Perfect. Tasha, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.